This is Math 142, Section 8.1, and this is actually Part 1 of that section. And we're going to talk about polar coordinates. So polar coordinates, coordinates are ways to keep track of points in space. We're used to rectangular coordinates, also called Cartesian, after Rene Descartes, you know, the I think, therefore I am guy, um, philosopher and mathematician. X, Y, we're used to thinking in what's called rectangular. So if I told you I had the point, 3, 5, x is 3 when y is 5, right? So that means you go 3 in the x direction and 5 in the y direction and make a point there. Notice we go over and up. We're kind of traveling along the edges of a rectangle. It's called rectangular coordinate system. Um, but that's not the only way to keep track of points in space. Um, if we're going to do polar coordinates, we can call our points, uh, we use points in the form r theta. This is going to look really familiar to you. Um, we still have our, our little space. This is zero degrees facing this way. And what we do is we, we think of like we're standing here at the origin and facing zero degrees. So you turn, rotate theta. So now you're facing this way. And then you go that direction a distance r. And notice that that, then, is the point. That also defines a point in space. So, for example, if I had the point 3, 45 degrees, 45 degrees is this rotation, you know, to here, and then I go a distance of 3, and it's that point right there in space where I've gone, turned 45 degrees, and gone a distance of 3. Now let me show you what, uh, there's, there's graph paper for this, you can Google it, but let me show you what it looks like on, on Desmos. Here's some, here's some polar paper. So notice that there is like these angles defined along it, and then these radii, which are distances. So this is a distance of one, two, three, four, five. So if I wanted to think about the the point uh, 4 pi over 6. So notice I would be going the pi over 6 direction, but I would only go out 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So it would actually be this point right here. And this is the four, point 4 pi over 6. Or I could think about the point, uh, let's say, 7 pi over 4. Uh, pi over 4 is here, so it'd be this much of rotation, and then be out 7. So in that direction, go 7, 5, 6, 7. There's that point there, 7, pi over 4. And that's kind of interesting to me, this 7 pi over 4. This is one way to get to this point. There's other ways I could get to this point, right? Like, instead of just turning pi over 4, what if I went a full rotation and then pi over 4 more. So that would be 2, plot, two pi plus pi over 4, and 2 pi is uh, 8 pi over 4, right? So I could go 9 pi over 4 and then still go that, dirt, that distance of 7, and I'm at the same point. Or I could do two rotations, right? I could spin around twice. Boom, 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 and then go that distance. So it's still a distance of 7, but now it would be 17 pi over 4. And now what you can see is there's a, a lot of ways <laughs> to express this point. There's actually more than a lot. There's an infinite number of ways to express this point. I could keep going around in circles, but I could also do uh, something like a negative rotation, right? I could rotate this way, and that would be... 2 pi minus pi over 4, right? Or 8 pi over 4. So this could still be going 7, but rotate negative 7 pi over 4. And it's even, it can get even weirder than that. Um, how about I do a rotation, so I'm facing the other direction. So I actually get out to, to here. So let me think about that is 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4. This would be 5 pi over 4. 
And so if I rotate 5 pi over 4, notice I'm facing this direction. So what I could do then is go back 7. So this rotation gets me facing that direction. But if I go negative 7, boom, it gets me to that same point. That's a big difference between polar coordinates and rectangular coordinates. Now, in polar coordinates, there's only one way to express a position in space. For example, 3, 5, over 3, up 5. There's no other way to, to write a point in x, y that ends there. But in polar, there's an infinite number of ways. There's infinite variety for, for expressing the same point. So points are unique in, in their representation is unique in rectangular, unique position, unique uh, representation. But in polar, the position's unique, but there are an infinite number of ways to express, express that using polar coordinates. So what we're, we were finding were coterminal points. We have that 345, you know, and, and uh, or I could express it in degrees or, or radians. So basically, I'm adding 360 to this one. So a coterminal point to 345 would be 3, and then whatever 360 plus 405 is. Uh, I'm sorry, 45 is, which is 405 degrees. These points are coterminal. We've seen that word before. They terminate in the same spot. So what I want to do now is think about how I could go back and forth between those representations. So if I'm going to take the point... Let's take that point I just had, uh, 3 pi over 4. And how am I going to write that in rectangular coordinates? So in other words, what I want is I want to know some x, and I want to know some y for it. Okay, we have all the tools we need for this. You know, if uh, because when we're doing unit circle, and we look at pi over 4, when that distance is 1, we can look up those values on the unit circle. We know the x value, and we know the y value. And if I peek at the unit circle, they're both root 2 over 2 in this case. Cosine of pi over 4 is my x value. Sine of, of pi over 4 is my y value when that's 1. And if I want it to, to be 3 instead, I could just make it 3 times bigger. So that means that this would be 3 times cosine of pi over 4 for x. So 3 times cosine of pi over 4, which is 3 root 2 over 2. And sine would be that radius times, I'm sorry, y would be that radius times sine of that angle. So there's... A relationship for us right there. We know that x is just r times cosine of theta, and we know that y is r times sine of theta. That's nothing new for us. That's We've been using that for a long time, ever since we've been working with unit circles, so, uh, essentially. Another relationship that I know is I know that this makes a right triangle. So let me let me redraw this. So there's my r. There's my theta. I know that this distance, this x value, is r times cosine of theta. This distance, this y value, this distance right here, is r times sine of theta. So let me think about Pythagorean theorem for a second. I could think of it in terms of x and y. If this is x and this is y, and that's r, I just have Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. There's some great relationships for me. Um, and there's actually one last piece I want to think about now, and that's how is just that theta related to x and y. Well, I know that tangent of theta is y over x. So these relationships right here become key for me if I'm going to go back and forth between rectangular and polar systems. So let's take these points right here that are in polar and convert them to rectangular. 
So what I can focus on is these two relationships right here. So I know that x is um, r times cosine of the angle. Oh, and r is 5. And y is r times sine of the angle. Now pi over 6 is a benchmark, so I can get that exactly. Uh, pi over 6 is at the point root 3 over 2, 1 half. I just peeked at my unit circle to get that. So there's my x value, there's my cosine, there's my sine. So both of these are multiplied by 5. So the rectangular coordinates for this must be uh, 5 root 3 over 2, 5 halves. And that's how I can get through all of these, 11 and 2 pi over 3. Well, the r is 11, and the theta is 2 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3, that is a unit circle point, uh, negative 1 half, and root 3 over 2. And so now, if, if it wasn't, a, if this wasn't um, a benchmark angle, I'd just do it on my calculator and get a decimal approximation for it. But both of these are just multiplied by 11, so this would be negative 11 halves and 11 root 3 over 2. And so on, I can just keep going it's it's all the same the same way up for the next one the radius is six and the angle is five pi over four on my unit circle five pi over four terminates at negative root two over two negative root two over two and those are all multiplied by by six so if I multiply by 6, it's going to be like 6 divided by 2. So this would be negative 3 root 2, negative 3 root 2. All right, here's what I want you to do. Hit pause and figure it out for this one. And I'll write the answer there in just a second. All right, I hope you got that. And last piece, let's go the opposite direction from rectangular to polar. So we know x and y, we want to know r and theta. So I'm going to end up using these relationships. So first off, to get r, it's just Pythagorean theorem. But then notice for tangent, theta is inverse tangent of y over x. Now I could do that on my calculator. I might be able to look at unit circle and figure some of them out. So let's look at this one. Um, 1, negative 1, over 1, down 1. That's that point right there. So the R value is going to be that, which is root 2. And then if I think about this, inverse tangent of this, notice it's over and down the same amount. So this is like a negative 45 degrees or a negative pi over 4. So that means then that uh, if it's negative pi over 4, this must be 2 pi minus that, uh, minus pi over 4, which is 7 pi over 4. How about this next one? Over root 10, up root 10. That's got to be 45. That's got to be pi over 4. And then, if I do Pythagorean theorem, notice that this would be... 10 plus 10, which is the square root of 20. 20 is 4 times 5. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 root 5. So on these ones, on some of these, I can get the exact value. But if I think about this, 6, 8. Over 6, up 8. Pythagorean theorem. It's going to give me 10. So my radius is 10. Now, I'm going to go inverse tangent of 8 sixths or the inverse tangent of 4 thirds. Now if you want you could put that in your calculator and get a decimal equivalency for it. it you'd have to round it though so I'm just going to leave this as inverse tangent of 4 thirds. That's an exact answer. 
All right, last one like this. Uh, back root 3 over 3 and down negative 3. So it's like that. So if we do Pythagorean theorem, uh, so negative 3 squared is 9. This would be 9 times 3, which is 27. 27 plus 9 is 36. Square root of 36 is 6. So our radius is 6. And our tangent, y over x, negative 3 over negative 3 root 3, which is 1 over root 3, positive, right? It's going in a positive direction. So that means I want inverse tangent of that. So I don't want this angle, though. I want this angle right here because I want it to terminate here. So um, root 3, remember tangent is y over x. So when x is root 3, it happens at pi over 3, but it also happens at 4 pi over 3, and that's what this is going to be. Oh, no, sorry. That's wrong. It happens at pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. So this is going to be at 7 pi over 6. Give these problems a try. Send me questions, message me, or put them in the forum.